What's going on everybody? Here at A2 Wind Tunnel again with Al from Race Louvers. Al, do you want to say hi? Hi everybody. <laughs> so we're in here with a C7 Corvette, uh, another company's wing. Don't want to name any names. <laughs> another company's splitter with some other companies, canards, homebrew uh, side plates. Al's going to be running through some louver test. We're going to be doing a couple things with the wing, removing the splitter. So, kind of just running through some stuff on this car. Um, you know, getting data, figuring stuff out. And it uh, should be a fun day. All right, so run one is done. Car actually made pretty good downforce. Modification one, just see what they do. Like, like all the times we've been in the tunnel, uh, you can see the front sort of so there's a pressure probe in the front of the radiator Pressure probe on the back side of the radiator. So we know how good those are working Otherwise, we get all of our downforce numbers directly on the tires The tufts are bursting underneath of the wing separation. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we're getting separation under the wing won't say the name of the wing, but it's one of those twisted wings. <laughs> uh, Pretty high angle and I, I, uh, you measured it. What was it, Al? On the outsides, it was 20 degrees, which is extremely excessive. Um, so yeah, we'll kind of play with wing angle. We got a bunch of plans today. All right, so we just did run two with the factory C7 hood. That's a factory vent, right? Yes. Basically, okay. Um, so you can see the size of it. Did basically what we expected it to. Getting ready. So there's the other hood we're testing so factory hood with a set of um race louvers in it you want to say anything about the louvers are they the r those are the rts rts, yep. RTs? yeah um so rt hood louver set getting ready to go on All right, guys, so running through some tests, car was a little rear biased, so we're tinkering with the rear wing. We did pull some wing angle out, ran it, and then we pulled the gurney flap out of the channel. So here's the gurney with my, you know, sitting in the wing like this. So pretty, pretty tall. So what we're doing now is actually taking the wing off of the car. And we always like doing a wing off after a couple wing angle changes. So now the car will make lift. So let's say it makes negative 100 pounds, but the downforce reading was 200 pounds. You know that the swing is 300 pounds. So that way it gives you like a total wing number. Um, just something neat, a way to kind of compare wings a little bit more closely than a total number, especially because front downforce, if you have a ton on the front, it may look like you don't have much in the rear. I hope that all kind of makes sense. All right, so running the car with no wing, we now have like a wing number effect. I don't think I commented earlier on the louvers, but the louvers performed well on this setup. You can see how open it is behind it. Yeah, the louvers um, were worth yeah. about 67 pounds of the downforce in the front, so pretty good compared to the, the stock vent was like 14. Yep. So good numbers on that one for sure. And now we are pulling the splitter off. Don't want to get sued, so I won't say anything about who made it. <laughs> um, but all, all things considered, the car actually is making good downpour, so it's kind of just cool testing, you know, parts in general, uh, not even Owens our stuff. You need help do something, you know, it's your car. Yeah, we're gonna get a no splitter run and it'll kind of be like the wing, any lift or downforce created by other stuff on the front, we know just what the splitter does. So we just did a run without the splitter. 
so now we have a splitter total number. Um, and that's about all we're doing on this thing at the moment. Uh, what we're actually doing, we're all standing in here. Uh, Jeff's gonna crank it up to 85 miles an hour while we're standing. I will. <laughs> he sees me somewhere. Oh man. Yeah, you were, you were sliding. I was trying to catch it a little bit. Oh, that was funny. That was a fun. Good times. <laughs> All right, guys. So earlier in the video, uh, I mentioned the wool tufts and how they just kind of burst. So without even watching them uh, as the air is going, I knew we were getting separation on the wing. Now, separation on a wing. Pretty simple. If I were to trace a wing shape and the air is coming on like this, it'll stay attached to a certain point until the wing is too steep and then you just end up getting a bunch of separation off the back rather than a nice attached flow creating downforce. So that's definitely what was happening on this wing. And at a point earlier in the video, I mentioned that the wing, uh, it was one of those wings where the center is not quite as steep as the outside parts of the, the wing. So the center was around 13 while the outside tips of the wing were around 20, which is extremely steep for pretty much any wing. So we did a five degree change, which brought the center to around 13 degrees. Uh, I'm sorry, which brought the center to around eight degrees um, in the center. The outer, oops, the outer was still around 15 degrees on the outer. Um, and we lost, am I, run, I might run out of space doing it like this. That took away 31, uh, oops, 31 pounds of downforce and took away 21 pounds of drag. Now, some very quick, easy math gives you a lift to drag ratio of a whopping 1.47 to 1, which is terrible. Now, I have to add a caveat to that. That probably means that the wing was still in some amount of stall condition. A 1.47 on a wing is very bad, but any wing operating in a stall condition will be an extremely low lifted drag. So keep that in mind. It's not necessarily the wing itself. It's just the condition the wing was in. Then from there, we did a couple tests with a gurney. Um, we did the no wing test. So we have a number on the wing versus no wing. So a total wing number. And the wing did make decent total downforce. Um, it's efficiency, even from a better condition to no wing was still fairly low. So there was still probably some stall going on. Um, at that point, the issue was the rear end wasn't making enough downforce. So it's one of those kind of situations where the owner of the car needed more rear grip uh, or needed more rear stability and faster turns. His take on the car was it was loose and fast turn so it just kept adding wing and it got a little bit better um, but as you can see from the numbers we just did you know giving it more and more and more once you get to that stall condition isn't really helping you out a whole lot um, so efficiency is great but it's not everything especially when you need a total downforce number uh, but the solution here would most likely just be a better wing or a bigger wing now, one thing I want to note about wing efficiency versus total downforce, you see a lot of people quote their wings efficiency um, as almost like the only thing that matters, which is not true. 
Um, obviously it's important, but we're gonna do a quick example. So let's say we have uh, wing A. I got my notes over here. And it made a 20.7 lifted drag, which is good. Uh, and then you got wing B, which made 21, almost 21 even lifted drag. Now these numbers are off of a spreadsheet that I put together. I'm gonna to put a quick little screenshot of it right now. So these are actually real world numbers we're gonna use in this example. Wing A, for example, made 280 pounds of downforce. Wing B only made 122 pounds. Um, I should note, uh, these are both numbers at 100 miles an hour and both wings were, were at zero degrees. So you can see, okay, they're, they're almost equal in efficiency, but this one is making almost 160 pounds, far more than double wing B, right? Now, if wing B, uh, this was zero degrees, um, if wing B, we ran it at five degrees, it jumped up to only 173 pounds of downforce, so still 100 pounds shy of wing A, but its efficiency went down to 13.4 uh, lift to drag. So you can see how adding wing angle, I don't wanna say always, <laughs> I don't like using superlatives, but any time I've ever seen it, uh, wind tunnel, CFD, whatever, a wing's efficiency goes down the further away from zero. Um, there might be some very weird outlying cases where that isn't true. Um, so that's probably what was happening on the wing in the wind tunnel. In order to make a total downforce, the wing just had to be cranked so steep it was getting into stall. That's why the efficiency of the wing was not very good. All right, so that's today's lesson. All right, guys, so that's where we're wrapping this one up. Done on the Corvette. Didn't do a ton of runs, but still plenty of good data. Ended up getting to a final um, setup balance um, where we know the car is airily balanced, aerodynamically balanced. Um, so I think that's about it. What do you guys think? Do you want to be on my video? You got to sign a release waiver. <laughs> Oh, uh, was it was it pretty cool? It was really really rad. Yeah. So I've learned a ton. Yeah. Always learning something. Even Al and I pick stuff up, and this is our seventh time here, eighth time. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe. See you guys in the next one.